Hello awesome people. I hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at Mercenaries Star by William H. Keith Jr. Uh, it is the second book in a trilogy that we're looking at. Uh, this is 400 pages. I knocked it out in three, well two and a half uh, days. Uh, I, I was finishing um, the first book in this book, The Decision at Thunder Rift, and I knocked out 80 pages uh, while I was waiting for a shuttle to take me from Frostburg. Uh, to uh, home here in Catonsville while I was interviewing for a job at Rossburg State University. And um, I finished it while I was waiting for the show that, that, that day, about 80 pages that morning. Uh, and then I said, well, let's, let's, let's read the second novel. While I'm on the shovel, three hours, I, I knocked out 120 pages. And then later on that night, I also knocked out 40 pages after I got here. Uh, so I knocked out more than 160 pages that day, but, you know, I knocked out a bunch. Um, and then the next day, I knocked out 110 pages. Uh, and then, you know, yesterday, I knocked out the last 130 um, and then I knocked it out pretty quickly. I've been blowing through these the first two books in the Battletech series. Uh, they're definitely very gripping uh, and so forth. So this is the second book. This is early publication early on in the Battletech series uh, for you uh, in the novel series. Now I read this stuff when I started reading the, the Battletech novels when I was in 10th grade in high school. Um, when I started playing the war game, then I said, oh, let's, let's, let's read some of these novels that are, you know, right here in the same bookstore that the, that the war games, uh, Walton, uh, Walton Books at my local mall. So I said, let's go, in Southern West Virginia, so I said, let's go ahead and pick up some of these things and, and, uh, uh, and, and start reading them and seeing if I enjoyed them. And so I, I continued uh, to buy Battletech books as they were published, and I also went back and reread all the old ones, about 10 or, 10 or 15 of them that had already been published, and about that rate of about once a month. Uh, and so forth, and just knocking out that one and buying it as soon as it was released, um, and just keeping current. I did that for the rest of the high school, uh, and then I also did that in college too. Uh, my my major love in high school, uh, my junior high, um, and actually grade school too, was fantasy. I, I read J.R. Tolkien's uh, the The Hobbit in Lord of the Rings. Um, and so I was doing a deep dive into all things fantasy as a result in grade school. Uh, and uh, and so I was doing everything from from Ari Salvatore uh, uh, to, to Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman's uh, Dragonlance stuff, which I've already reviewed for you and I've gone back and reread it. Um, one of the things I've been doing for this channel uh, is that I've been going back and rereading things that I've only read once uh, to see if I still like them and what I think about them now as somebody who is, you know, um, 45, right? <laughs> Middle age, right? A few with a few decades of hindsight, more decades of reading, you know, reading a lot of stuff, uh, classics of a genre, and that sort of a thing for this channel. Uh, this channel is is named uh, uh, the worst thing about new books, which is a famous quote by a famous 19th century uh, French philosopher Jacques Joubert, who said that the worst thing about new books is that they keep us from reading the old ones, um, and that is sort of a key figure for me. So I like to go back and read a lot of old old things uh, that were popular at the time, but which may have been forgotten, or you know, are nice retrospective perspective, you know, and going back and reading the series that I haven't read, um, and so forth. Uh, in college, I got into horror, uh, and, uh, and started reading H.P. Lovecraft, and then I started doing a deep dive into horror, um, and I read the Cthulhu Mythos, and then some other stuff, too, so I've been deep into horror, too, um, and I've, ever since college, I've probably been reading about twice as much horror as I had the other two genres, uh, so this channel focuses then on those three key genres, science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Uh, for you guys. So military science fiction, which is what this genre is in, is my favorite subgenre of science fiction. Um, it's gripping, it's action-packed, and William H. Keefe Jr.'s in this, uh, trilogy has a lot of action scenes. In fact, you'll have uh, multiple chapters of an action scene in it, uh, which is especially if there's if there's if there's like a, a major battle with multiple flanks. You may have just one chapter telling like one of those flanks, right? Or one chapter um, has an initial victory uh, by your, your your primary characters, uh, and then all of a sudden uh, something happens to change that victory. Like he sees like a, like, a, like a big giant mech that's coming down the street towards him and he can't flee or something like that. He's like, uh-oh! And then end of the chapter, then the next chapter will begin, right? Uh, and so forth. Uh, you know, so, so, so these battles have multiple chapters to them. So if you like your combat, then the military science fiction genre uh, generally, and this series specifically, is going to have you uh, happy. Now, this is 400 hours long, 400 pages long. The first book in this uh, trilogy, which I've already reviewed for you, Decision at Thunder Rift, um, was one of the first books that was published in, this, in, in the Battletech series. And so it's set uh, before some of the key events that are going to happen, like the Succession War, Four Succession War, uh, and then uh, the, the Clan Invasion. So if you're familiar with the Battletech universe from video games or role-playing games or the, the war game or uh, some other stuff like that 
uh, then that's what's happening. Uh, this this is earlier than the sort of key events that are taking place uh, in in this sort of thing. So basically, for those people who might not be familiar with Battletech, the key sort of concept of this is it's set in the 31st century uh, with with advanced technology militarily uh, for a while. Um, and and there are these we have advanced out there. We have settled and colonized thousands of of, of systems. Um, and we have never met intelligent life. We are the only intelligent life out there. So all the wars, all the battles, all the issues have never been addressed, and we're taking our issues with us into the future. And so we're fighting with mechs, we're fighting with tanks, we're fighting with uh, soldiers uh, in, 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 in on the battlefield with anti-tank weapons and anti um mech weaponry and so forth so and there's also aerospace fighters uh that can fly around in space and then also in the atmosphere conventional fighters helicopters of attack nature uh and so forth and so a lot of these battles are taking place but but the but the battle mechs are the king of the battlefield um and so forth so uh there was a big giant uh progressive happily happy thing that everybody loved called the star league um, and for about 300 years there was this golden age of humanity um, and then there was this civil war that happened after one of the after one after Ameris took over called the Ameris coup and and then the war against him uh, and that follows and then and then after him and seeing how far that people had fallen uh, a key general named Kerensky leaves and he flees out to the the periphery um into the unknown and leaves with most of the league forces and then as a result there have been these these successor states that have risen up in the inner sphere um that have taken over very five, five different aspects of the major inner sphere area and have been vying in the succession wars and each the first two succession wars were nasty they would take out um, you know, they, they used a lot of nu nukes and w weapons of mass destruction, and they destroyed key facilities uh, like like water uh, treatment plants uh, and so forth, uh, satellites around a, around a colony uh, in in a place like Bryant, which had which had satellites around it, which kept the weathers uh, from 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 so so it could be colonized. And not everybody had to move back to the poles, those sorts of things, right? And all, all that sort of technology was destroyed during the succession. First two succession wars and the last two succession wars were much more knightly and honorable uh, because there just wasn't that much left to fight for. And so, uh, so for the last few hundred years, um, ever since the Starley fell, uh, we have been living in an era of, of progressive war, progressive losses, and so forth. And so, a lot of these things from that era are, are lost, tech, and have been lost. So. Um, that's sort of the era that we're in, um, and we're about to have the fourth succession war begin. And that's, where, that's about where we are. Um, and so, what this the first book tells is the the founding of the Gray Death Le uh, a Regiment, which is a mercenary regiment, and they'll become a, a big, well-known mercenary unit, um, and that sort of a thing on the on on the planet of Trell. Okay, so 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 so, so we we have the founding of, of Gray Death Legion in the last chapter. Uh, well, actually, in the epilogue of the uh, uh, of the first book now now our key character is grayson death carlisle and he is a the leader of the formation he's the guy who founds it he is the son of a previous uh, company of of mechs uh, called called carlisle's commanders that served the lyrian commonwealth one of the five successor states um their planet is attacked by a, by initially bandits um and then another group will come in afterwards in the first book he'll fight them off with just forces that he recruits after his unit is destroyed in the first few chapters um and in an ambush uh and then they will uh he will take some of the people that he recruited on trail one with him and then so so this book will begin on on mercenary star which is where the chapter uh well or rather the novel comes from in the first few chapters um and now he's arrived there he's going to be recruiting people um his uh, his his jump ship people are recruiting people too. They recruit some aerospace fighters, uh, that sort of a thing. Um, more more max, more people, and, and then he takes his first contract. And so now mercenaries start it, this 400 page uh, novel. Mm -hmm. Then is the story of, of what he's going to do next after the first 50 pages or so. Now they're going to arrive. And then for the next 50 pages, they they have to go through a blockade. And then for the last 300 pages or so, um, is the actual proper novel itself his first mission now his first mission um is a cautery mission uh which is to train people and there is a rebellion going on about 10 years ago the draconis combine another successor state that's next to the larian combo well 
captured a planet called Verthandi. Um, so that's where we're going to be set for this novel on, on Verthandi. And this is a, a world that used to be very peaceful, rarely turned to war, civil war, uh, those sorts of things. Um, and then 10 years ago, um, the, the Draconis Combine took it over um, and brought it in. Um, and so now they have been pretty particularly nasty against these folks. And so there's been a big giant uh, rebellion and uh, in revolt going on. So these rebellion people are going to be are trained in anti-mech tactics uh, by by the Great Death Legion, how to fight tanks uh, and so forth. So he brings his unit onto this first to to train these people uh, and so forth. And the initial battle is for him to not to not get involved in combat. He's going to be mainly the the people who train. And this will actually make sense because that's what he did on Trail One, right? On Trail One, he was the only person left from his region, his red after from his units, Carlisle's commandos, his dad's unit. After they left, um, uh, they were destroyed, and, and a couple of people, and, if, and some people who left, left, left in their, in their dropship and, and fled up uh, to the jump point, and then, and then jumped out of the system. So that, that's basically what's happening in this uh, in this novel. Um, so so it, may, it does make sense for the, that I'm to hire him in this first mission. Also, again, you would see, uh, <laughs> you know, you're typically going to have a smaller unit for your be your first unit, right? Somebody for, for somebody like this, right? A typical unit that's got a better rating. Um, out better reputation and so forth probably isn't going to take you know a uh, guerrilla training cautery work that you had to go through um, uh, blockade to get to the planet right they're probably not going to take that right this was definitely a desperation move and so forth um, and so we're going to follow along now this novel is about 70 pages 80 pages longer than the previous novel it does have sequel sequelitis which is my phrase for referring to when a novel has gone too far <laughs> the sequels uh, to a novel um, for example uh, isaac asimov's uh, foundation uh, series is another example the first couple of novels are actually very short and very tight and had multiple stories in them right um, but then the last and then the last uh, novels get bigger and bigger and bigger as the series goes along uh, jk rowling's harry potter series does the same thing right it takes probably like twice as long to read the last novel as it does to read the first one all right, their size increases significantly over time by hundreds of pages. So this novel does have what I call sequelitis, which is an issue uh, to my mind. But this was gripping, a lot of fun. I'm glad I'm going back and reading the Baltic stuff, uh, and uh, you know, and, I'm, and I've been enjoying, you know, going back into it. So I want to finish this trilogy, um, and then I'll be open. Maybe I'll go back and do some more Baltic stuff. You know, you know, next will be the Warrior trilogy by Michael Stackpole. Um, if not. That if I'm not in that mood, then I just won't do it. I'll just, I'll just move, which tells us the story of the Four Succession War. Um, then, then I just won't be in, in that mood, and that's fine too. Uh, I want to keep myself open and be organic uh, to to where I want to go or what I want to absorb myself into, um, and so forth. The next book uh, is uh, it's 300 pages long. So, so my goal is to knock it out in four days. If I knock out, you know, 100 pages a day and the seven day pages on the last day where you be, that'd be fair. So anyway, that, that, is, that is this second book in this series, Mercenary Stars. Um, and so there you are. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read this novel? Uh, I kept it spoiler review. Um, but if you want to talk about spoilers in the comments below, I'd be happy to do so with you. If you enjoyed this novel, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. 7 plus, just like the previous one. It was gripping. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but it was longer. Um, and so, you know, a lot of fun stuff happened. Uh, in it though, and it was a lot of fun. You know, it definitely has a lot of combat. So if you like combat, your novels, <laughs> welcome. Uh, but there you are. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, why not hit that subscribe button? There's gonna be a lot more of these to follow. And then finally, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it and in watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives, and we're pulled in so many different directions. So the fact. You spent this time with me is incredibly humbling, and I appreciate it. So thanks again, and have an amazing day.